All right, welcome back to Honored Mad Men. Today we're going to be talking about The Umbrella Academy, both the TV series from Netflix and the comic books, mainly regarding one character and one specific incident. The famous Jennifer incident involving number six, a.k.a. the horror, a.k.a. Ben Hargreaves. The character who, in my opinion, has the coolest power. I mean, the guy's got Bloodborne tentacles. Or, excuse me, I mean Lovecraft tentacles. While we get a lot more of him in the show, his death and the circumstances that lead to his death are still a bit of a mystery. And by a bit, I mean entirely. Although there's definitely a good amount of clues we can use to sort of paint a picture of what could have happened or what probably happened. But first we'll go over just who Ben Hargreaves was, both in the show and in the comics. We'll start with the show, since that's what most people have seen, and he appears a lot more in the show as well. But before I get into all of it, it is worth noting that Gerard Way himself did say that he's not entirely sure on how he's going to write Ben's death or how to even go about writing it. However, in a more recent interview, well, three years ago in 2019, Gerard Way said that the circumstances involving Ben's death is one of the biggest spoilers of the series because they haven't been explored in the comics yet. But he indicated that he had some idea of what exactly went down and I'm sure we can find a couple answers within the comics and the show itself to maybe make an educated guess on what happened. We may never really know, but I'm sure we'll get you know more insight with the next volume, Volume 4, coming out soon. And of course, if the show gets picked up for a fourth season, which it probably will, but who knows with Netflix, then I'm sure that they'll cover a lot more of the new Ben's story in that. But for now, I'm working with what we got. So let's get into it. One thing I wanted to get out of the way quickly was the post credit scene involving a Ben riding the subway. Many people speculated that this Ben was in fact Umbrella Ben in the restored timeline and that he was alive, meaning that there was two Bens in this new timeline, Sparrow Ben and Umbrella Ben, but the showrunner has come out and said that that is entirely Sparrow Ben at the end. He's just sporting a whole new look. So that rules out any paranoia, psychosis subplot for Ben next season. So in the show, Klaus has been able to see and talk to Ben since his funeral, having convinced him to not go to the light, and throughout the first season, his ghost is sort of like this manifestation of Klaus's powers, and sort of like an early measure on the exact magnitude of his powers. And throughout the season, we're able to see Klaus become more one with the dead and his powers, with Ben's ghost being able to physically punch Klaus when he becomes particularly infuriated with him. As leading up to that moment, Ben had become really, really tired of Klaus's shit. And perhaps Klaus subconsciously was tired of his own shit, and that's how Ben was able to punch him, but who knows on that one. By the end of the season, Ben's ghost drags Klaus to go save his siblings, causing Klaus to fully conjure Ben to the point where the other siblings can see him to help them fight off the time cops. We also learn from an early season, season one, that the young Ben seemed to take no joy in using his powers, which were, I guess, objectively the most horrific out of the uh, family. Now, at the beginning of the second season, we see Klaus fully conjure Ben again during the second apocalypse scene that Five stumbles onto, where the whole family is using the full extent of their powers. And at one point in season two, we also see Ben possess Klaus so that he can enjoy another day amongst the living. However, Ben dies for real at the end of Season 2, using the last of his strength to calm down his world-obliterating sibling. And that's really the last of this version of Ben we see. At the end of the season, of course, we see that there's a new alternate Ben that has survived the events of the mysterious Jennifer incident. We didn't know this at the time, but we find that out throughout Season 3. Now, he looks a little different in between the end of uh, Season 2 and the beginning of Season 3, but I think that's for the better. That haircut would not have fit the new Ben's personality at all. Now there's already been significant divergences from the comic series throughout the Netflix show. For example, in the comic books, the Sparrow Academy is not an alternate universe form of the Umbrella Academy, at least as far as we know. They're just a separate team of the adult versions of seven more of the 43 kids that were born with special abilities. They appear to have been raised by this pink haired dude that comic book version of Vanya meets. But there's no point getting into all that now. But it more or less takes the biggest step away from the source material with Season 3. As it is part 
Hotel Oblivion and part Sparrow Academy, which is likely how the fourth volume of the comic is going to go down, albeit much differently. It's sort of like how Full Metal Alchemist went off on its own because the manga wasn't finished at the time and then Brotherhood is basically just following the source material to the T. They're both good. I personally prefer the ending of the original 2003 Full Metal Alchemist as opposed to Brotherhood because Brotherhood's ending kind of just felt a little too uh, cheesy for me, but hey, I'm not hating on anybody who likes it. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. The Ben we see in Season 3 managed to become part of this Sparrow Academy mainly because Klaus and the rest of the family did not tell Reginald about Ben's existence and death when they ran into him in the 1960s. So as far as he knew, his alternate self did not adopt Ben. So as he saw it, fair game. Now we know that the original timeline from the show and the Sparrow timeline that it's currently in, or was currently in, are pretty different, but they do share some events, and one of them is this mysterious Jennifer incident. Which is actually mentioned directly by Luther to the new Sparrow Ben. However, he doesn't really react to it. But it appears some version of this mysterious Jennifer incident did in fact happen in the Sparrow timeline. As we see multiple strange pictures around Ben's room when Victor is hiding out in there from the rest of the family. And one in particular appears to be of a woman and it's signed Jennifer. Now this can obviously be taken multiple ways, but the going theory currently is that in this timeline, Ben did not save Jennifer. So whatever the Jennifer incident was, it resulted in a lady named Jennifer dying. It's likely that this Jennifer lady died and Ben could have saved her, but it would have cost him his life and he chose not to and therefore is sort of haunted by her image. Maybe he dreams of her, but it could explain his overall shitty demeanor. It is also possible that this Jennifer incident didn't happen at all, and his possible dreams of a woman named Jennifer could just be because the original Ben disappeared into the ether, and that, as Luther puts it, there's still a little bit of old Ben in the new Ben. Which could mean that this Ben has had dreams of his alternate timeline version's death, and it having something to do with this mysterious Jennifer woman. Either theory is just as likely as unlikely. So moving on to the comics. Now things are a little bit different here. He only appears in flashbacks for the most part, at least in the first two volumes. The monster that he's able to summon through his stomach appears to be the same species as the space squid from Rigel X9, seen in the opening pages of the first volume, receiving a flying elbow from Tussling Tom Gurney in an intergalactic wrestling match that happened to be going on at the exact same time as surprise bursts of 43 children around the world. This occurrence, however, was a complete coincidence. But appearing in minimal capacity and just as a child in flashbacks in the first two volumes, he finally appears as an adult in the flashback in volume three, Hotel Oblivion. He does appear in one flashback in this volume as an adult though helping Diego and Sir Reginald stop John Perseus, a comics-only villain. But he appears in ghostly form for the first time, saving Klaus's life after he ODs and is tossed out of a crack house by an angry, shot-up biker. Klaus had been being used by these bikers to run a scam in which people would pay to have him channel their dead relatives, usually rich ones or ones who had money stashed away somewhere before they died. He would find out where the money or valuables were stashed and then lie to the person about its location. Then the bikers would go and pick it up and provide Klaus with drugs. It's a really great arc in the comics and I'm probably not doing it a great deal of justice here. So you should read that. Anyway, this all culminates in a big desert shootout in which Klaus is the only one to walk away from it unscathed. Leaving the other survivor, a shot to hell biker, to die in the desert. Klaus then returns to the crack house and shoots up some heroin and hallucinates his dad and then ODs. Miraculously, the shot to hell biker returns and tosses Klaus out of the crack house, leaving him in the street this time. After a while, Ben's ghost shows up for the first time in the comics and carries Klaus off to the hospital. He has a brief chat with him when he wakes up and suggests he be ready for what's to come. Ben's ghost looks noticeably withered and the... and his Lovecraftian space squid appears to be gone leaving in its place a shriveled, gaping void, which is similar to the Trolls of Elden Ring. Now it's possible that in the comics, Ben's death set this interdimensional squid free. And if it has escaped, then maybe it's the thing that Reginald has been using Hotel Oblivion to capture. 
You see, in the comics, Hotel Oblivion is this sort of interdimensional space prison for all the supervillains that the Umbrella Academy had stopped over the years. They all thought that Reginald had created it to hide the fact that he wasn't infallible. But Luther, Dr. Zhu, and Diego discover that the villains inside the hotel were just bait for an even bigger fish. This giant space squid-like blob that touches Luther's head and makes him flash back to being a baby. Now, I'm not saying that and Ben's monster are the same thing, but it's definitely possible. And if that were the case, then did Reginald design Hotel Oblivion to capture Ben's monster? Who knows, but more importantly, the Jennifer incident in the comics seems to have a slightly more clear answer on uh, what exactly happened. So the theory is more or less the same as the show one, that Ben died saving a woman named Jennifer. And sure enough, we see a woman, a store clerk to be specific, with the name tag that says Jennifer watching the screen, distracted, even from the customer right in front of her, by the news reporting that some of the Umbrella Academies might not have survived their ship crashing. Now, I can't imagine why this would have been included on a whole slide or a whole page, and it's zooming in on Jennifer's name tag without having some connection to this very mysterious Jennifer incident. I think the slide was included to show that Ben did save Jennifer and that he died saving her, but it's all very subtle. But I guess that's the whole point of this video is that it's all speculation. I mean, who knows if that monster out in the after space region of space is Ben's monster escaped and let loose. And who knows if it has some relation to the uh, space squid from Zygel X9. But that's really all I have to say in this video. I mean, I didn't really answer the question on what happened at Ben's death. I just went over some of the clues and that's really all I wanted to do in this video. I hope it was somewhat informative. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it wasn't too rambly or off topic or anything like that. Uh, if you liked the video, please give it a like. If you disliked it, you know, dislike it. And if you like my videos or just generally like hearing me talk about random shit, please consider subscribing. That would really help me out. My next video will probably be Elden Ring related. I've got like several on the uh, lineup. But I have another non-Elden Ring video coming up soon too. And uh, I guess I'll just see you guys then. Everybody have a good one and uh, see ya. Peace.